Welcome back to the God's Peculiar People podcast. Today we're going to be talking about Christian biographies. Welcome to the God's Peculiar People podcast, where we learn about the lives and characteristics of God's people. So I've been trying to decide for several weeks what episode to put up uh, here before Christmas. I didn't really have a good person to talk about, and so I was just trying to decide, well, what do we do here for this episode just before the Christmas episode? And then we have the last episode of the year, which is, it'll give you the most played episode of the year. You get to hear that again on December, I don't even remember the date, December 26th, the, day, the week, the day after Christmas. So I was just trying to decide, well, what, what do I talk about today? So I figured I'd do this episode talking about Christian biographies for two reasons. One, in case you need a last minute Christmas idea. Some of these you may be able to find as Kindle books. Others you might be able to order from Amazon or from Christian book distributors or possibly Victory Baptist Press. You might be able to buy the books from there. I'll try to leave links to all of those three places in the description. Your best option to get books before Christmas when this comes out, if you need to, would probably be Amazon, but you might be able to get them from the other places as well, but they might be cutting it a little bit short. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about some different books. So I have 85 things listed on here. A few of these, well, let me explain where this list is coming from. So I've been creating on Pinterest. I have a God's Peculiar People Pinterest board. And it, there's a board specifically for Christian biographies. So I've been trying to go through and posting different biographies. One, so that I can, if I'm looking for one real quick, I can go and find which ones I'm looking for. Or if I'm like, okay, I need a new book. Which one should I do next? I have a place to kind of go and see them. And then I can kind of click them off as I go. But I figured I'd make it available to you all as well. So one thing I need to make clear about some of the books on this list is that uh, they do link back to Amazon, and I'm currently playing around with the Amazon Associate Program, seeing if I can figure out how that works. And so if you were to click on some of these books and then purchase them through Amazon, it, there's a chance that I could get a fee for that. So that disclaimer out of the way, let's move on to talking about some of the books that are on this list. So like I said, there's 85. A few of them are podcasts because those are Christian biographies. I, I'm going to try to add some video biographies as well on here so people if you're looking for a biography you want to listen to something or read something you have the options all here on this uh, page and i'll make sure to link the pinterest page board that i have to this episode as well so if you want to go and see all the different books you'll have that option the very first book i think that i linked here I don't remember which one it was for sure, but it was either The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom or Susie, The Life and Legacy of Susanna Spurgeon. Now, I did The Hiding Place. Might be some disagreement about that book. The books that I'm putting on here does not mean that I agree with every person on what they have written or what you know, with the entire person's life, but that they are interesting people to read about. Sometimes there's things we can learn from someone's life, someone's experiences. And that's the same with these pot, uh, these books and Christian biographies. There's, you know, take, take the meat, take what you can learn from these people's lives and experiences. And then the rest toss aside and say, that's not applicable to me that I don't agree with, but you can find something in these books. And the hiding place is very interesting because of the story of someone who is trying to help the Jews during the World War II, during the Holocaust, someone who had attempted to help them beforehand, were themselves then imprisoned. There's so many different angles to the Holocaust, the concentration camps, the different types of people who went to these places. And this is one, a different angle. This is an angle of someone who had helped the Jews and then was sent to a concentration camp. So it's a very interesting book. I've listened to the audio book. And I'm, I've actually listened to it dramatized, which is very interesting. That is from uh, Focus on the Family, I believe. I'll try to find, uh, maybe put just like audio links as well. Uh, make a list of audio books, good audio books to listen to as well. But that one was very, very, very interesting. I'd like to read the entire book. I think I have in the past, maybe, but it's been a very long time. So I want to read that again. Now, another book on this list, uh, if you've enjoyed listening to the Mary Slasser of Calibar audiobook that we did a couple years ago and is now up on the Words of the Past YouTube channel, you could also just read the book, Mary Slasser of Calibar. 
very nicely reprinted version of the book. So you can check that out. A book that I want to read again, because I, I read I read it a few years ago, but it's time, I think, to read it again, is A Chance to Die, The Life and Legacy of Amy Carmichael, and that's written by Elizabeth Elliot. So I'm, I think that's on my list of things to read again this year. Um, I, I have so many books I want to read. <laughs> But it's on my shelf. I have this this copy, this exact copy of the book, so I want to read that if I have time. And I also have the Journals of Jim Elliot, which I hope to read that as well. We'll see if that happens. I also want to read more about Fanny Crosby. I did an art, I did an article, huh? I did a podcast about her uh, this last year. But there's some things I didn't know. Just reading some articles about her, some things that. Um, I had forgotten that she had been married, she had had a child, uh, and so I'd like to read more about her, be reminded about her story a little bit better. So I have a couple different books on here about her. One is um, Her Heart Can See, The Life and Hymns of Fanny J. Crosby, and the other, I forget what this one was called, uh, it's just called Fanny J. Crosby, an autobiography, and that was written by her. Uh, so I would like to read that one as well. Uh, another one that I find interesting, and I believe I mentioned this one possibly last year, but I'm going to mention it again because I think it's a good one, is the book Called for Life by Kent and um, Amber Brantley. I find this book interesting because I was living in West Africa at the time that this story was taking place in Liberia. Was it Liberia? Hang on. Yes, Liberia. I can't remember which country. Um, but this is a book surrounding the Ebola epidemic and... Uh, just a very interesting story, you know, having some first-hand experience to what the the news was in West Africa, what was being said, um, hearing about people who were affected by Ebola. I was living in a small village um, in West Africa. What, what was amazing is that village never was affected by Ebola. Amazing, amazing miracle that no one in that village, people that I um, no and love. None of them were affected by that. It was mainly in the bigger cities. It kept creeping closer to that village where I, I had been uh, while I was there and then after I'd left, but thankfully it was never uh, an issue there. So I find that book very interesting. It's it's talking about Kent. He's a doctor with, I believe it's, oh, I believe it's Doctors Without Borders, if I remember correctly. And so it tells his story of how he contracted Ebola. He knows exactly what he did that got it, and then um, what happened with this new medication that was being given out, that was being tested, and he was one of the first to use that and was able to survive um, Ebola. So it's a very, very interesting story. If you have any interest in medical missions, um, diseases, things like that, this is a very, very interesting book to read. Now, I recently found a book, and I know nothing about this person, I, I actually just ordered an older book about her because I, I want to read more about her. She's considered to be like on par with Billy Graham. Her name is Henrietta Mears. Um, again, I don't know anything really about her, but the book, the, there's a new book out about her called Mother of American Evangelicalism, uh, The Life and Legacy of Henrietta Mears. So I found an older book that came out in 1994. I believe it was. And that was called Dream Big, the Henry Etta Mears story. I found it for only like $5 on eBay compared to, I think it was like $10 up to like, somebody had it for like $200 on, on Amazon. I was like, well, it might be a good book, but no, it can't be that good. Um, unless it was signed by her maybe. Uh, but I, I, I ordered that. I'm just curious uh, about her story. I, I truly know nothing about her. I've never heard her name before. If you know anything about her, Henry Etta Mears, let me know. I just figured, hey, for five bucks, read the book, find out about her, because uh, I have absolutely no clue anything about her. Uh, another person that I want to read about this year, and hopefully you'll read about as well, may hear some episodes about, is uh, Billy Sunday. He was the baseball player turned preacher, and I know very, very little about him. I've, I've heard his name for years and years and years. I've read a few things about him as a kid. I think I read some like, kids' books that were um, about him, but I've personally as I've gotten older, I have not really read about him. So I'm very curious to read a little bit more uh, about his preaching style, his life, how he went from being a baseball player to a preacher. So um, that is on my agenda for this year. 
Uh, another one that I read recently is called The Astronaut's Wife. It's called, uh, it's called The Astronaut's Wife, How Launching My Husband Into Outer Space Changed changed the way I live on the earth. This is one of those that you take take what you find that's interesting and, and toss out the rest. It's not a bad book. I found the writing I found the writing style to be a little tricky because she kept jumping forward and back, forward and back, which I, I understand I'm okay with because she was weaving in her story of how her life changed during this. Uh, but I always struggle with books that, that jump back and forth in the narrative so much. I like a steady, a steady narrative. You're just make, take me along with the flow. Let me, let me go. Don't, don't bounce me back and forth. Uh, but it was a very interesting book. It, if you have any, anyone who enjoys space, space travel, this is a different, um, angle to be able to learn about, to be able to learn about, uh, space travel and what, um, Christians, religious people, how they handle sending a loved one into space. So it was an interesting read. Um, I would recommend that one if you have any interest in space from that aspect, uh, learning about, you know, the struggles that astronaut wives deal with. It's a very, very interesting book on that. Now, let me see. Let me give you one or two other ones here. Another book that I'm going to reread this year, because I have not read it or listened to it in a very long time, is In the Presence of My Enemies. This, I grew up as a kid. I remember sitting in church, and there was a lady in my church every Wednesday night. Her name was Mrs. Denman. Every Wednesday night, she would remind our church to pray for the Burnhams every single Wednesday night. That's how I knew about um, Gracia Burnham and her husband was through this this woman reminding us every single week to pray for them while they were being held captive in the Philippines. So I heard about that story and then my parents bought the audiobook and my older brother and I would listen to that. I don't know if we were riding in the car, falling asleep at night, but we listened to that audiobook over and over and over. So I've heard it many, many times, but it's been a few years now since I have gone through that story. So that is one that I am going to uh, probably either reread or listen to this next year, because I think it would be very interesting just to refresh my memory on the circumstances of what happened when Gracia Burnham and her husband, which I'm drawing a blank on his name at the moment, they were um, Martin, I was going to say something else, but yeah, Martin and Gracia Burnham, um, they were held hostage for a year in the Philippine jungle by a group, oh, I forget what the name of the group was, um, but it was a guerrilla type force that was holding them. Interesting, um, missionaries just going to vacation and end up getting caught and caught up in this, um, hostage situation, but it's a very interesting story. All right, let me give you one more Oh, there's so many. Make sure you check out the list. There's, there's a lot of cool ones. I'm trying to add more books to it as well. Which one have I not mentioned? Uh, I like to find the biographies, especially Christian biographies. I'm trying to find more because I believe there are more. Um, of people from the World War One, World War Two time frame, because that that was a very that was a very difficult time for missionaries. And there are a few standout stories. There's uh, the book Evidence Not Seen. There's, of course, The Hiding Place. There is Eric um, Little. But I'd like to find more people from that, that time frame and just read the experiences that missionaries from that from that time, what they dealt with. We know of, of the Boxer Rebellion. There was John and Betty Stam. That, which I don't have that book on here, I don't think. I need to find uh, the book about John and Betty Stam and add that here. I think there's this book, it's called The Greatest Missionary Generation, and it says, uh, inspiring stories from around the world. Book description says, Larry Sharp establishes the characteristics, challenges, successes, and uniqueness of an incredible generation of missionaries. And I believe this is a book about uh, missionaries in the post-World War II era, which potentially would include people like Jim Elliott. It doesn't actually mention anything about who the people were uh, in in this book, but it is considered the greatest generation. And I, I would have, have to agree, I think some of the missionaries from this era were definitely some of the best missionaries, the, the most active missionaries um, were in that post-World War II era 
um, for sure. All right, well, that's where I'm going to leave you guys. Uh, I'll make sure to have a link to where you can find some of these books, which would be Victory Baptist Press, Amazon, of course, and Christian book distributors. Uh, if you know of any other good places to be able to get books from, if you let me know, I'm looking for some other places that have some older style books, some more like self-published uh, autobiographies or biographies. Some of these mass-produced ones are interesting, but I'd like to find some that are a little bit less known. So uh, if you have any sources, places to find that, please let me know about that. But that is it for today. This is the last uh, recorded episode until the new year. So have a wonderful Christmas and new year, and I will talk to you again in 2024, which sounds crazy to say, but have a wonderful rest of the year and we'll see you next year.